These are five JavaScript concepts that every developer must know and understand. The common problem that I see even in advanced developers, they are treating arrays and objects like a simple primitives, which actually means, for example, we have here an array of numbers with 1 to 3, and we want to create another array, and they simply write that second array equals first array, and they think that it will work exactly the same, like for example with strings or with number. And it won't work like this, because here we are referencing the same array in the memory. It's not like copying the values, so it's not the new array, it's simply the same reference to the same array, which actually means variable array and array2 are reference the same array. This is why if we will write here array2 0, so we want to change the element on 0 place, and here we are writing foo, and after this we console log our array and array2, we can see that they are exactly the same. As you can see here we changed both the first array and the second array, because they are referenced to the same data. And it can be even worse when we are talking about arguments of our function. As you can see here we have a basic config, this is just an object, and we have a function generate extended config where we are passing a config. And obviously config is just an object, and here we want to add a port to this config and then return back the result. And when we are using here this function and passing inside our basic config, we are getting back our extended config. And actually it looks like completely normal code, we are passing there some data, we modify this data and we return back new data. Then we assign this data to the new property and we are good to go. But as you can see here I wrote console log for our basic config and extended config. And when we are jumping to the browser you can see that these are two exactly same objects, because they are the same, they are simply referenced to the same object inside memory. Which actually means that we are assigning arrays and objects not by value, like for example strings, numbers or booleans, but by reference. Which means every single time when we change object or array, we simply change it inside our reference. And the question is now how we can avoid this problem. In our case here with generate extended config, we must break here the reference to the config that we passed inside. And we can easily do this by just returning the new object. So here I want to use spread to take all properties from our config, but here we are creating a new object, and here we want to add our port property where we are passing our new value. In this case we are returning new object, which means we never mutate the old object and we are good to go. Let's check this out, I am reloading the page, as you can see our basic config is not modified when we are creating our extended config with port inside. Which actually brings us to the next concept, and this is immutability and mutability of data inside JavaScript. Actually when we are writing here config.post, this is mutating of our data, because we simply change them, we don't create new data. Immutability means that we never mutate our old data, we always create new data. And in this case here, when we simply returned a new object, we actually wrote our code in immutable way. Why do we need to do this? As you already saw in our example, we are making it to eliminate problems with mutating data. So we should not think that we will mutate some old data, we simply always generate new data. And actually here is a huge problem. In JavaScript we have randomly some methods that are mutable and some methods that are immutable. For example, when you are using simply array.push and here you are writing one, this method doesn't return you a new modified array. This method method mutates your old array, and this is exactly bad, because this is a mutable method. For example, if you are just creating a new array by using spread operator, and you are passing inside your first array, and then maybe a new value, in this case you don't mutate your data. Which actually means you must know what methods inside JavaScript mutate your data, and what methods don't mutate your data, but return a new result. For example things like map, filter, find and so on, they all return new data, they don't mutate all data, so you are completely safe here. The next basic and important concept is equality and comparison. As you can see in this code here, we normally write some condition inside if, for example 1 equals 2, and we are checking here if they are equal. And when people just start writing JavaScript, they are trying to compare also objects and arrays. 
And here's the problem, every single time when we create new object, it is referenced another data. This is why here, as you can see in browser, I am writing that object with property a equals 1 does not equal the same object with property a equals 1, because here you have a reference to exactly new object. So here on the left we created the first object and it is referenced somewhere in memory and here completely new object on the right is referenced to another object inside memory. This is why here you can't compare them at all because you are not comparing them here by value. And exactly in the same case it is working with arrays. You simply can't compare arrays because here you are getting false. But you can do this normally with for example numbers. And actually there are several solutions for this problem. For example, normally you have some entities inside your application, for example users, and you are comparing users, and normally users have inside some unique ID. Here in if condition we can check the ID of the user. So here we are comparing directly not to users, but their IDs. And in this case it will work because IDs will be either numbers or strings, and it will just work out of the box. The second way that we can do is stringify both objects and compare them, because in this case they will be strings and we can compare strings correctly. This is why here what we can write instead is json.stringify and we are passing inside our user1 and here we have json stringify and we are passing inside our user2. And in this case we are comparing them correctly, because actually here we are comparing them by stringified value. And the last variant is to use some library where you have correct comparison by value for arrays and objects. For example, libraries like Lodash or Ramda have specific functions for this purpose. This is why here we can write for example Ramda equals, and here we must pass two different things that we want to compare. It can be for example numbers, booleans, but it can also be arrays of objects. This is why here we can pass user1 and user2 and it will correctly compare these two objects. One more JavaScript concept that you must know is called callback, and we have callbacks everywhere. As you can see here is an example. Let's start from the bottom. So we have here a URL where we want to get an image, and we are calling our function download, where we are passing first of all our URL, and secondly process. The main point is that this process is exactly our callback. This is actually a function, which is just an argument of our download function. As you can see here is our process function, and we are getting inside picture, and we just console login this picture. And here on the top you can see our download function, we have here a URL and callback. The main idea is, it doesn't matter what we are doing inside this function, at some point we are calling our callback, and we are passing something inside. Which actually means callback is simply a function which is an argument of our function. For example here inside download, we are saying ok we need here a callback, which is why we are waiting that from outside when we are using download, we will pass a function as a callback. And we are calling this callback now here and we are passing inside URL. As you can see in browser we are getting first of all console log for downloading and then for processing. Why do we need callbacks at all? The idea of callbacks is extremely important to separate your code. As you can see here our download function doesn't know anything about process function. We simply call here a callback, and we don't even know what is happening inside this callback. This is why here we can provide whatever we want, it can be processing of the image, maybe resizing, downloading, or everything that we need. And it is extremely important for testing, because here we can test our download function separately without any logic of our process function. And we can do exactly the same in process, we don't mix this function with our download function. And the last JavaScript concept that I want to show you is really more advanced. It is called memoization. It is a special programming technique where you are trying to improve the performance of your function by caching your previous results. As you can see here we have a function memoized add, and when we call this function it returns us a new function new add. Now here we have a console log for new add function and we are passing inside 9. After this we are calling new add function again, and here we are again passing 9. As you can see in browser here what we are getting, calculating result 19, fetching from cache 19 which actually means that this function doesn't do calculation every single time. After first calculation, it stored the result in our store, and every single time when we're getting the same value, it reads the value from the cache and not calculate it again. 
and this is how we are implementing this function. First of all, this function must return a new function. And we are doing this because we need here to create a closure. So we need somewhere a storage where we will store our cache. And this is why we created the function. And as this variable exists, we have here a cache inside. And our cache is simply an empty object. Then here we are returning a new function where we are getting our value. In our case it was 9. Then we are checking if we have this value inside cache. And if we have it, we return this value from cache. If not, then we are calculating a result and we are writing the result to our cache. And this is it. As you can see, it's not that difficult. But when you are doing huge calculations, it is extremely important. Because it might improve the performance of your function significantly. So this was 5 JavaScript concepts that you need to know. Also, if you are interested in my 5 tips to improve your JavaScript code, don't forget to check this video also.